to row spreads. First of all, I mean, maybe most of you know, um, but it's a layout in which you can arrange the cards. It, it is great because it provides a structure. I'm a person who needs structure, for example, okay? And you can explore those questions within the structure. In each position in the spread reflects an aspect of your question to consider. Um, you don't have to use them for every reading, but it's a nice way to get started while you learn about the cards. It can be great for pinpointing the actual context and meaning of the cards. Today, I'm introducing the daily spread. It is from the Angela's Arian book. It is a quick mirror of where you are presently and where you are going. It indicates the direction in which your soul is currently taking you and how your body and external world are supporting this movement into a certain direction and how your mind is keeping you on or off track. So, because of the free choice. So this spread can be used for feedback about a major decision. It can indicate the direction of the soul. Um, it can also, I just want to point that out. When I started with Tarot, I only pulled one card a day because I wanted to learn about the cards. I meditated on it and I thought, I, I, I looked if it confirmed something that was going inside of me. Okay, so the, 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 uh, the three card uh, spread can be used in the morning or in the evening. So in the morning, it would be an indicator of the day's creative probabilities for actualization, the gifts, the talents and resources that are strongly indicated by the symbols represented. Or indicate the probable challenges that might uh, um, show up during the day. In the evenings, it indicate how you were assisted internally during the day and the probable action, including challenges of the day. I pull the cards always in the morning. I meditate in the morning and I meditate at night and I keep a journal and I write all the cards that I pull um, in my journal and I meditate on them, reflect on them, uh, see if there's any message that they give me that I haven't considered. So, um, this is the example I'm providing. The external reality, attitude, beliefs, quality of thinking, quality or energy or internal guidance and direction. So to take the cards and shuffle them, focusing on asking for inner guidance and how you can best use this day. Or if you do this daily spread in the evening, it's asking for guidance in what it is that you learned and benefited during the day. Whether it is done in the morning or the evening, take the shuffle procedure um, as follows. Take all 78 cards and shuffle the cards while focusing on the quality of day that you would like to have or the quality of the day that you have just experienced if you're doing this in the evening. Make a large fan face down and decide which end of the fan is your head and which is your feet. I usually have the left one as the head and the right one is the feet. And then ask yourself three questions. Where do I feel the strongest sense of who I am between my head and my feet now? Pick out a card in the general area of the fan that corresponds with where you are experiencing the strongest sense of self between your head and your feet. Put it number one face down. Where do I trust my decision-making ability? Select a card from the fan and put that in possession number two. And between my head and feet, where do I feel the healthiest in my body or the least tension? Select a card from the fan and put it in position number three, face down. So in this spread, position number one shows how you're being spiritual supported in manifesting either talent or moving through a challenge. Um, or stuck place. It is your spiritual guidance and inner resource. Position number two is to reflect your um, current thinking, your attitude and beliefs. And position number three is a picture of the quality of action or behavior you may manifest regarding health, finances, work, creativity, relationship during the day. Now you turn the cards over beginning always with position number one, which is the spiritual support that you will have during the day. If a problematic card appears in this position, it indicates that you have spiritual resources and assistance available to move through that challenge day. Position number one is the best position in which you have a problematic card. Then you turn over cards two and three. 
Okay, so when I draw, I draw three cards a day early in the morning and um, I shuffle my cards, but while I'm shuffling my car, I'm very mindful of what I'm going to pull um, and why I'm gonna do it. The question always is before I shuffle the cards, my layout is always the same. The first card I draw is this one, two, three up here, three card draw. It is the previous 24 hours of how I've adjusted to the question. The present card, the middle card is the now. The third card is the future of this 24 hour question. So when I look at like my first card is a six of wands. What that means is Jupiter and Leo. So I look in my chart where Jupiter is and also where Leo is. So I've, I've got the arrows pointing in those directions. So I always have my chart by me, okay? And I always make little notes. I too keep a journal. So you will notice that you start pulling, especially if you've done your exercise on the soul cards in the, in the um, workbook, I suggest you look at your personality and soul cards. And those um, are going to be very important because you will see when you pull a trump, which is a, a major arcana, that is going to take precedence. See how this magician, which stands for Mercury, that is a trump. So that that takes primary importance over all three cards. So it kind of answers my question because this is a Mercury communication issue. It was how do I approach my Tarot lecture? And it tells me I approach it in a group, which is the 11th house, the first one, and through Mercury and my communication, which is my ascendant and Leo and all my Mercury is in the first house, which is my personality. And like y'all didn't know, I have a personality. But anyway, I use my personality to kind of engage. Um, the Prince of Disc is the earth and air. It's in my 10th house and in my first house. So that's my career. So throughout the last 50 years, I've kind of done education, psychology, and also astrology and tarot all together. So it all fits. You see, um, I don't have to make it up because it fits very precisely in my question, how do I approach my Tarot lecture? I use what I've learned. I use it in my career. I use communication and good communication. And I call on my personality to engage. Okay, so that's the way I come up with that meaning. 